Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. We welcome you to uh, our version of Easter service this year. Uh, we know that uh, we wish we had the uh, whole congregation here with us, but we have the congregation gathered together uh, in your time and space. And uh, Easter comes and brings us the joy of resurrection regardless, regardless of what the situation is. For God is always with us. Um, you have your newsletter with all the things that are going on in the church. Uh, we hope that you will take a moment and uh, make sure that you have a chance to look at that. We also uh, noted that uh, we are going to be doing an act of remembrance. Uh, this is not communion, but it's set up to be uh, an opportunity that we remember the sacredness of uh, what the sacrament means to us and be, are able to follow uh, Christ's directive to do so in remembrance of him. Uh, so we hope that at home you will have some bread and some juice ready for that time of the service when we do that, uh, and that will become apparent as we get there. Let us continue our Easter Sunday worship with song. <laughs> Thank you. 
we have any number of people who are connected with the school systems that are members of this congregation. Uh, they serve in school districts far and wide uh, all throughout Northwest Ohio. And uh, reading the newspaper uh, just the other day, I saw where uh, Archibald uh, Local Schools has started to work hard on putting together the plans of making a long-term uh, distance education plan basically for the rest of the year. Not that that decision has been made yet, but to get ahead of things and get that organized. We know that there has been all sorts of change in the process of what has been going on. It has affected teachers and students particularly hard. And we remember their efforts this week uh, as we turn to our prayers. The other thing that I was reminded of recently, to consider and think about the seniors. We have three that are connected to this congregation. Ethan Hagens, Shane Eicher, and Raya Short. As the seniors who the class of 2020 will find that the things that we take for granted as rites of passage may or may not be available as this process is on. So remember the seniors that are connected to our church that you know um, and give them an extra word of encouragement that in this process there are things more important than the things that they may feel they are losing and that we will all stand together and know that God is always with us. Let us turn to God with our prayers. Almighty God, we come this day recognizing all the changes that are happening in our world and in our lives. And we have a recognition that even as we hope and pray that soon things will return to normal, not all things will be as they were. We ask that your providence would stand with us as we mourn those things that we lose along the way as we find strength to adapt into those things that will make up our new normal as we celebrate some of the new and innovative ways that we find to do some of the things we might have first taken for granted. You created us in, our, in your own image. And part of that certainly was the gift of free will, the creativity and imagination to think and create and following the way that you do. We give you thanks for the new things that you have brought to us, the ways that we have found to reach out to our neighbors, to our family, to our friends, continue to make them <coughs> part of our everyday lives. We lift up those people who are on the front lines, that need your healing touch, find themselves isolated and alone. Give us to follow those nudges that you put in our way that we might be the instruments of your peace, your grace, your comfort, and change some of the isolation that we find in our neighbor. 
All this we do in following the example of Christ, who you sent to us, who taught us and showed us your love, who reached out to everyone he met, even those in the isolation of leprosy, and created opportunities <coughs> of healing and community. And so it is in his example we lift up the prayer he taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. say good morning how is everyone doing so I will speak out um, to everyone who's watching and before I get started I just want to share a little tidbit with everybody um, I was having a conversation with Jamie before we started today and I wanted to share the revelation that Jay didn't know that our church was on TV until we got the opportunity to watch it and it was very mind-blowing for her, the experience of knowing that there's a building in her room and there's people that she knows that are on TV. So she thought that that was pretty amazing. And she got pretty excited when she saw Pastor Jim and she said, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. And I said, yes, we we're watching church and we we're watching and we we're learning about Jesus. So um, it just, it was one of those things that you think about how life has changed and things are different, but you have those small blessings and you have an opportunity to still learn and grow and, and to view that instance like a child and to still have that excitement I thought was pretty awesome. So I wanted to share that with everybody because it was, it was also adorable too, but it was just it was another way to think about it and another just another way to kind of think about everything that's going on and find, find those simple joys. So um, today we're gonna be talking about what is Easter. And I think that if you were to ask me, especially as I was a child, what Easter was, I would probably tell you it had something to do with bunnies and candy and eggs and marshmallow peeps and jelly beans. And that's definitely more of the commercial part of it that we think of, but um, I did some research because I wanted to know what the religious definition of Easter is. And so this is what I came across, and I'm going to share it with you guys. Easter is the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus from the tomb on the third day after his crucifixion, so when he rose from the dead. And Easter is the fulfilled, or if you're a fancy Nancy fan, fulfilled is a fancy word for completed, prophecy of the Messiah. So in the prophecy, it talks about how Jesus was going to be persecuted and how he was going to die for our sins and how he was going to rise from the dead on the third day. And all those things came to completion. And it was interesting to me when I looked everything up because there was a very specific line that was repeated. And I went on to multiple websites to see if it was something that was going to be repeated, and it was. And so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but it says, remembering Jesus' resurrection is a way to renew daily hope. Those are the key words, daily hope, that we have victory over sin. So we think of Easter every day that we have hope. Not just once a year, not just when we think about it, but every day. It's a constant. It's, it's ongoing. 
And this also is just a reminder that God can overcome the forces of evil, of how truth will prevail and unmask the lie, of how love will triumph over sin, and how the blessed hope of eternal life will even put an end to death one day. So I want you to think about that daily hope. And I think that a lot of us need that right now, and we want to have good things to think about, and hope is, it springs eternal, that's what they say. So just think of Easter every day in that daily hope. We're going to pray. God, thank you for sending your one and only son to die on the cross for our sins. This act is the foundation of our faith. Through this fulfilled prophecy, we are given eternal life in heaven. Thank you for the reminder of the daily hope that we have with you. In your name we pray, amen. Precious blood of Christ No guilt in life, no fear in death This is the power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my death power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Christ alone. 
The scripture today comes from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know what you are looking, that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Before we begin, I point out that the Easter flowers are here and uh, they will be ready to be picked up come Monday morning, uh, Monday or Tuesday. If they are still here on Wednesday, I will begin to deliver what's left over uh, out to you uh, if you don't have the chance to come and pick them up. Let us pray. I lift mine eyes into the hills, once cometh my help. My help is in the name of the Lord who makes heaven and earth. Grant blessing on this time spent that the words spoken and the words heard might be one and the same. Spoken and heard will be pleasing in your sight. Amen. Christ the Lord is risen. Christ the Lord is risen indeed. I once had a dentist ask me, of course, the moment when he had like three or four different tools in my mouth. Why is it that we know exactly what day Christmas is, but we don't know what day Easter is? Of course, the premise of his question was not entirely true. We do not know the exact date of Christmas. Well, yes, we do. Christmas is December 25th. We do not know the exact date of Jesus' birth the thing we celebrate December 25th as. Most scholars believe that Jesus' birth would have been sometime in August, but it's difficult to pick out exactly when the census took place that is noted in scripture, at least in the Gospel of Luke. The reason for Mary and Joseph to travel to Bethlehem, but then you get to the story told by Matthew and it brings into question whether they traveled to Bethlehem at all, and that's a debate for Christmas time. It's enough to note we don't have a specific date for the birth of Jesus. We do have enough information to determine at least a simple handful of potential dates for Jesus' death. And therefore, the day of Easter resurrection. We could take our calendar system all the way back to the years 34 AD through 38 AD and determine the dates of Passover for those years and establish basically the five potential Easter dates. But instead of memorializing a date for Easter, we remember that it is held in direct connection with the Passover. And each of the days in the week 
from Palm Sunday to Good Friday have their place and purpose in connection to the Passover. So we always move the date of Easter to place it against the backdrop of the Jewish Passover, which is on a calendar set by the moon, as opposed to the sun, so Easter Sunday can fall anywhere between March 22nd and April 25th of any given year. I don't think that it's a matter of the date. The point of Easter is to celebrate the idea of the resurrection. And we live in a time that is post-resurrection. As the song we sang at the beginning of the service states, we are Easter people. The hymn claims, East, every day to us is Easter with its resurrection song. So Easter is not so much a day on the calendar as it is a state of mind. And maybe this year, more than any other time, we have an opportunity to realize that, reflect against it, and make changes for our lives for the better. Now, in many ways, we're celebrating Easter in the most authentic way possible. That very first Easter, all of Jesus' followers, the disciples, were hidden away in an upper room, afraid. They had concerns after the events of Good Friday, what would happen to them. At first, they didn't understand. Even the disciples who had been there all the way through had different motivations as to why they followed Jesus around. They had visions of Jesus as the Messiah, but a Messiah wasn't meant to die. Messiah was meant to have power and control. In Jewish custom, it was return Israel to its rightful place as a nation particularly blessed by God. They had been witness to the miracles, all the miracles. They believed that those miracles would be performed to bring about Israel's power. And they, as followers, would have a peace in that concept of glory, power, and control. When Jesus declared that he would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, it was a sign of political upheaval and revolution, not a theology for redemption. There was no concept of Jesus' death in any of that. Despite the fact the scripture tells us Jesus predicted his death and resurrection numerous times, nobody was ready for the reality of his death. And nobody had even considered resurrection. So that first Easter day, the disciples were locked away in the upper room and the women went to the tomb, not expecting any miraculous discovery but to go and anoint the body because it had been overlooked in the hasty funeral prior to the beginning of the Sabbath day. There was no expectation of what would come next. Even as the word spread that day, nobody believed ex without experiencing the risen Lord for themselves. Gloria nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Eternal hope. New days. Here's something to consider, because I think we need to start considering the world in whole new ways. Think about it. Every hour of every single day, somewhere in the world, 
the sun is rising. Somewhere the sun is rising on a brand new day right this moment. As the world travels in its orbit of the sun, spinning a revolution on its own axis over the course of every 24-hour period, the sun is always rising somewhere, someplace, on somebody's new day. It is a constant, just like Gloria said. We tend to view things strictly from our own point of view. We fail to take into account the other person in any given situation, what they are thinking about, what they are feeling, let alone large groups of people. I often consider as I'm driving down the road towards Cincinnati, all the hundreds of cars and trucks I pass going the other direction. All those stories, all those people with their own expectations for the day, their plans and where their day is going to take them completely in the opposite direction of which I'm traveling. Hundreds of people. And then there's those people who are driving along the same way I'm going. I have a plan, a direction, an exit I will take off the interstate, but each of them has a different destination in mind, a different amount of time before they arrive for whatever it is they're traveling towards that day. Have you ever thought about things in that way? All the stories that are out there beyond your own? Yet that's the way Jesus thought about many things. In his teaching, in his ministry, in his miracles, Jesus embodied a concept that exists really throughout the entire Bible to consider the needs of other people before the needs of self, or at least alongside of needs of self. Jesus went to the cross in the form of a sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice to show once and for all the love of God for all of creation, past, present, future, and then just to completely seal the deal. On Easter Sunday, we discover the empty tomb. Confirmation of God's ultimate promise that God holds the power over sin and death. God's love is enough to accept and care and forgive for every person who I know, who I don't know. God's love is enough to accept and care for and forgive each and every one of you. Hope eternal. It's what salvation is all about. And this is the day. This is the new day, the new opportunity to follow the call of Christ, to reclaim the image of God in which we were all made and created. As United Methodists, we're strong sacramentalists. We believe that though through the sacraments of baptism and communion, we actually physically receive God's grace as a tangible, real thing. That God's spirit is invoked into the elements of the sacrament, the water or the bread and the wine and properly consecrated by actions of clergy amongst the gathered fellowship of the congregation 
The grace of God physically is made part of the elements. And we receive them as we eat them or it is poured out upon us. But in that, the theology, I can't consecrate, I can consecrate these elements here in front of those of us that are gathered, but I can't consecrate the elements that you have on your table. Therefore, we cannot celebrate the sacrament of communion in this setting. But that does not mean that we cannot take some time to create sacred space. Sacred space on this most reverent day. So I'm going to ask those who are gathered here today to come forward. I'm going to ask you to gather around your bread and juice. We take time to remember the acts of God through Christ in the presence of the Holy Spirit. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he and his disciples gathered around a table and shared a final meal. Many things were said, many things were done, but it was the sharing of the cup and the bread that Jesus said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And so we begin this act of remembrance with the cup. We remember that Jesus gave the cup to his disciples saying, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out with my blood for the forgiveness of sin, for yours and for many. So take your cup in your hand and reflect for a moment on something in your life, some act, some word, some thought, for which you need forgiveness in this moment. Take a moment, think on that thing, and drink in remembrance of him, assured in the knowledge your sins are forgiven. And then we remember that Jesus took bread, gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Take your piece of bread in your own hands And remember that the bread represents all the good things in life that are provided for by God for our benefit. Reflect for a moment on one thing, one place where in this past week God has provided for you. We'll take a moment and share that around your table and to give you a demonstration, Matt. Would you share an item that you have? Uh, I'm, I'm grateful this week that we are still fully employed and can help others out, other family members with purchasing uh, food for them and whatever they need to to take on a daily basis. Jamie? Uh, 
I too am thankful for um, continuing my job, um, keeping all, everyone that I've encountered um, that work in corrections, um, they're working so hard to keep us safe on, in our communities, but also those that are inside the walls of a jail to stay healthy and safe. Now, now we give you a chance to share around your table. If you need more time, you can certainly pause the service, continue to share together. Now eat in remembrance of him, giving thanks for all the good things that God has provided and done in our lives. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your great works in this week of palms and passion and resurrection. We give thanks for the gift of salvation made manifest through all these your mighty acts. We give thanks for the hope that we have in a future that we look at unafraid. We give thanks for this sacred time, for one another across our connection within the congregation, within the community, within the church universal. We give you thanks for the ways we remember, remain gathered, even in our isolation. In Christ's name, we pray all these things. Amen and amen. Let us continue and finish our worship with song. Call him Jesus. 
by his Holy Spirit, prepared to face the trials of tomorrow. Amen. <laughs>